Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you could, could you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. I believe we praise God better when we stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to worship God this morning. Amen. We're going to open up this service. Amen. With the word of prayer. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God, towards us. God, we thank you, God. We understand that if it had not been for us on our side, God, we don't know where we would be, God, but we thank you, God, because you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way, God. God, you gave us health and strength, activities of our limbs, and God, we come out on this morning to bless your name, God, for everything you have done down through the years. Uh, God, you've been good to us, and God, we want to say thank you on this morning. God, we come into your house for no but. But, but for no other reason, God, but to bless your name. Uh, God, for you are good and you are greatly to be praised. Uh, God, we thank you on today, God, for what you're going to do to and through us. Uh, God, we come to bless and magnify your holy and great name. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask you, God, on today to move heart to heart and from breast to breast. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, our prayer on today is that we don't want to leave the same way that we came. Uh, God, we want to leave change. Uh, God, we want to re leave renewed. Uh, God, we want to leave strengthened on today. God, so right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, God, we ask you, God, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, for your presence to saturate this place. Uh, God, we thank you on today. Uh, God, we ask you, God, God, to move upon on us on today. Uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, God, build us up where we've been broken down, God. God, strengthen us where we are been weakened. Uh, God, right now in the week, God. God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we thank you on today, God. God, for what you're going to do, God. God, through your preached word, uh, God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, God, your word says, uh, you sent your word uh, and your word healed them, God. God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we want our testimony to be on today. Uh, that we are healed people. Uh, that we are strengthened people. That we are whole people. God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, God, where we come, uh, God, to bless your name. Uh, so we begin to open up our mouth and bless you. Come on, power and praise. Uh, do what we came to do. Uh, come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Uh, for the Lord is good. Come on, tell them that you love him. Tell them that you're grateful. Come on, tell them that you care. Tell them that he's wonderful. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them that you love him. Come on, power. I can't hear you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. These are the prayers of your people.
testimony. He's a great God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Worthy of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Able to do all but fail. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on and magnify his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we give you great praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are my strength. Strength like no
Testimony that 
muddy floors to the lowest valley. Even when I was in the valley, hallelujah. Oh yes, the same as blood. His blood gives me strength from there. you glad that the blood still works? I said, aren't you glad that the blood still works? It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. That means wherever you are, the blood can find you. Hallelujah. I didn't come to start no trouble today. I wish I could have about seven of y'all just lift up your hand and say, Lord, let the blood find me. Let the blood find me. Hallelujah. I need the blood to find me. Because I get a little weak every now and then. I need the blood to find me. I got a condition in my body. I need the blood to find me. I get heavy sometimes. And if the blood finds me, it'll never lose its power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to behave today. But I want the blood to find me. Man, that's how I get my power. Today, prayer, amen, praise and worship to these musicians, to amen, these leaders, these elders, these ministers, the deacons, my senior members, amen, to those that have joined us via social media, amen, and to our visitors on today, amen. We honor God for you, amen. 
man. I'm a little loud. I'm a little loud. Is that better? Mama, is that better? It's the same. I'm still loud. Cut me down a little bit. Awesome. Okay, we, let's cut it down just a little bit. Amen. He said lower. <laughs> cut it down. All right. All right. Shh. If it's, if it's, if it's loud, I'm going to bring it down. I want people to come to church. And I say, I ain't going that loud. <laughs> Amen. It's, a, it's a little tight in here, I know. Uh, we ain't got no windows for sound to bounce off of. Uh, uh, so y'all, shh. Look at your neighbor and say, shh. Type it in the chat, shh. Pull out my suits. We get ready to raise our offering. Amen. Yeah. And we have a little saying that we have here at Power and Praise. Because I believe that life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can decree a thing, and I'm a witness. Amen. So what you offered in your hand, uh, this is my good seed that I'm sowing into fertile ground. And by faith I decree, I'll ne never be broke. Oh. Another day in my life. All right, you're now in the hands of the ushers. Listen. Saturday in this month, uh, the brothers, somebody say the brothers, but they don't know this till now, but the brothers, amen, we're having a barbecue here at the church on that Saturday, amen, well some of the brothers know, but all the brothers know now, amen, so we want to spread the word um, for that, I think the ladies is doing something, but they got to meet, you know, brothers, we don't need a lot of meetings. No, we just talk about it and do it. Y'all need meetings and stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. But please mark your calendar. Um, please mark your calendar for the last Saturday. Um, yeah, because Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Amen. I believe uh, that the men ought to be on the front line in ministry. Uh, and you could do ministry and not have a mic in your hand. Yeah, you 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 can you can do ministry uh, and not preach and prophesy. Your, your, your life is a message. Amen. And I am so grateful that God is blessing this church with uh, men. Uh, thank you, Mother Walker. Amen. Real men. Amen. And 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 let me say this because I. I you have to be so politically correct these days. When I say real men, I make no reference to homosexuality. So, so come out of the. When I when I speak of real men, I'm talking about husbands, fathers, people that have gainful employment, 
uh, they serve in the community, uh, they can be an example to other young men coming up that uh, I don't have to be like LeBron, I don't have to be like Steph Curry, but I can be like Derek, I can be like this one, I can be like that one. So when I say real men, like, let me get to my message. Because, <laughs> can we get, yeah, amen. Amen. Once it, but it lines right up with my message. Uh, once again, we thank God for all of you that are here, especially our visitors, I am so honored. Man, it is hard for me uh, be, be, because you don't know how, just being honest, you don't know how to treat visitors anymore. Um, sometimes people come, don't, don't call me out, don't call me out. Uh, I just want to come and enjoy service and go about my business. Then some people come and say, well, he didn't call me out, I was a visitor. So just thank God for Let's get to the word of God. I'm just saying it. Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Let's get to the word of God this morning. I will not be before you long, uh, but I will be before you strong. Uh, in First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Just for our visitors' sake, uh, it is my heart's desire that we start at 9 and end at 1030. Uh, just in case you're looking for a church home and you don't want to be in church all day. Now, if the Holy Ghost take us past 1030, ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> yes, First Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and just in your reading this morning, I'm going to read the 11th verse, very familiar passage of scripture uh, that reads, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. The word of God is blessed. Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. I want to preach this morning from the subject, It Starts With Me. It starts with me. Uh, we've been talking uh, practically since Easter about preparing for Pentecost Sunday. And for those of you that have been here the last few Sundays, we've come to understand that Pentecost Sunday, uh, from a traditional perspective, uh, is 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, or 50 days after Easter. And it symbolizes the unanimity, uh, Sister Linda, of the disciples being in the upper room on one accord, and the outpouring or the infilling of the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And oftentimes in traditional Pentecostalism, we celebrate uh, by coming to church on Pentecostal Sunday, everybody dressed in white, amen, shouting and crying and snotting and spitting, and then leave and go back to doing what you did before you came to church. Uh, but, but what we want to understand as we grow in grace and the things of God is that the Holy Ghost is more than just something that stimulates your emotion. The Holy Ghost is something that and the reason why I have been strategically taking time out for this is because if we can all be brutally honest here this morning, uh, most of us, our interpretation of the Holy Ghost has been skewed in some capacity. No matter, no matter what church you come from, uh, uh, the, the Holy Ghost, uh, most of us don't have a totality of what the Holy Ghost is. Because even in the Pentecostal church, uh, we have limited the Holy Ghost to just something to make you move your feet or to cry or to become emotional. And the Holy Ghost is more than just something that moves your emotions. But the Holy Ghost is your comfort to your rule and your God. And when you embrace something from an understanding perspective, then you don't take advantage of it. It takes advantage of you. I told y'all go preach strong today. So we have to understand exactly what it is, but we also must understand what it is not. Amen. I, I can I can tell the musicians to strike up the band and it'll cause me to move my feet. But that's not the Holy Ghost. Because just the same way I move my feet with the organ and the drums and the guitar, if I play James Brown hot pants, I'm gonna move my feet too. Are, are y'all with me? Uh, uh, Papa got a brand new bag. <laughs> yeah. 
so so the Holy Ghost is not something if I if I can say it like this, the Holy Ghost is not just a mover, but it's a keeper. Scripture says that he'll keep you in perfect peace with your mind stayed on him. Now, you can come to Jesus broken, but you shouldn't stay in him broken. You can come to him uh, 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 bound, but you shouldn't stay in him bound. See, a lot of times, and I think we've got this misconception that when a preacher preaches a gospel, um, it's applicable to everyone who hears it at that time. Um, scripture says one plant, one water, but God give the increase. Uh, when you hear a preacher saying, get yourself together, get yourself together doesn't correlate to the person who is just coming in off the street. Get yourself together refers to the person who should know better. Because when you know better, you... Well, y'all help me preach here today. When you know better, there's an expectation of better because someone is coming behind you that you can't see the Holy Ghost. So the only way you see the Holy Ghost is through the people that say they have the Holy Ghost. So if you say you have the Holy Ghost, you have to act like you got the Holy Ghost because somebody is watching the Holy Ghost that's supposed to be in you. So if you acted unforeseemingly and I'm watching you, it would suggest that I can act that way too. But that's not what the Holy Ghost does. So last week I preached uh, a message and, and, and sure there's, there's been one point that I just could not shake all week long. I couldn't, I couldn't shake it, Mother Walker. And that point was, it is your responsibility to be prepared for the promise. Promise couldn't manifest until they were in proper position, being in the right place and being in the right time. Yeah. We were talking about uh, uh, the disciples being in the upper room uh, waiting for the promise of the Father. And what I said to you guys on la uh, to, to, to you on last Sunday was it didn't take 50 days for Jesus to come through the Holy Ghost. It took them 50 days to be prepared. And, and, and Sister Susan, that thing has kind of resonated with me because um, it don't take God all day to move. It takes us all year to be ready for the move. Oh, God. If we would be in a place to be prepared for the move, then we could get in and get out. Because contrary to popular belief, we don't come to church for a move. We come to church for a filling. The move takes place tomorrow on your job. The move takes place on Tuesday at the doctor's office. The move takes place on Wednesday at the Walmart. You come to church to get refueled so that you can go to serve or be served. Are y'all with me today? So we have to understand there that, that, that in order to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you've got to be in position. Yeah. But more than in position, you've got to accept responsibility. Yeah. It got quiet. That's, I, know, I know it's good because the Holy Ghost told me it was good. And the reason why it got quiet was because nobody wants responsibility. I'm going to come sweeping through the city today. So y'all might as well either buckle up or get mad. Whichever one you want to do is all right with me. I'm going to come sweeping through. Nobody wants to accept responsibility for, responsibility for their walk with Christ. Yeah. It amazes me how we can sit in a high seat and point our index finger at everybody else on where they're off, what they're missing, what they need to do. But we can't ask God to shine the light from the lighthouse on me. And one of the reasons why our churches are emptying at an alarming rate is because we're spending more time broken trying to fix people who got it together better than you. I got to say that again. We're spending more time broken trying to fix people who got it better going on than you. Just because I don't move my feet don't mean I ain't got them on the inside. So we have to accept responsibility. Somebody say responsibility. Responsibility. You have to accept responsibility that God is a gentleman. 
is a gentleman. And I know it's rough for some of you that have had relationships with ungentlemanlike people to embrace a gentleman whom you can't see with your eyes. But God does not force anything on you. This is good fishy cannon. God ain't going to strong arm you. Oh, you're going to get your Holy Ghost. God, God don't do that. God don't grab you by your throat and open your mouth and say, oh, you're going you to receive this Holy Ghost today. You got to want it. You got to want it. Now, the problem with people wanting it is they don't really quite know what it is. Because most of the people that I thought had the Holy Ghost do stuff that the Holy Ghost ain't supposed to be making you do. So I don't want the Holy Ghost. If I, if I didn't turn tricks before I got saved, surely I don't want to turn tricks after I get saved. Y'all ain't going to help me preach here today. Oh, I told you I'm coming through the city. I'm swinging for the fences today. If I didn't lie on my taxes, Mother Walker, before I got the Holy Ghost, then shortly after I get the Holy Ghost, I don't want to lie on my taxes. Because you know the saints tax time, you get children that you didn't birth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Even I had to get convicted. Holy Ghost convicted me one time. One time, not all the time. Oh, yeah, I was at the meat market. I, can't, I don't qualify for EBT. Oh, but I said, my high, I had an EBT card in my hand. Yeah. Holy Ghost said, you know you ain't supposed to be using that EBT card. I said, oh, but grace covers me today. Thank you, Jesus. And if you get me through this one, I won't do it again. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Can we not be honest? Because when you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost opens you up to all truth. And we have to take time with this because we have to understand two things. What it is and what it isn't. Or if I can just say it like I want. I got visitors here today, so I don't know how educated they are. So I wanted to say what it is and what it ain't. But since we got some educated folk, what it is. And what it is it. We have to understand that, 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 that it is a keeping agent. You are responsible to be prepared for the promise. I'm reminded in the scripture uh, uh, one day when the Bible says about the disciples were on a boat in the water in the midst of a storm. And, and Jesus came walking to them on the water. And, and, and Peter said, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. Am I in the Bible? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because, uh, well, I'm not really concerned because Peter always been crazy. I wouldn't ask Jesus to let me come to the water, especially if I can't swim. I, I, would, I would articulate it in this manner. If it is you. Stop the storm. <laughs> if, if, from a common sense perspective, if it is you, stop the storm. Calm the sea. Yeah. But he said, if it is you, allow me to come to you on the wall. One thing you have to understand about Jesus, and I'm going to say it again, he is a gentleman. He's not going to do no more than what you ask. He had the power to stop it, but he granted the wish or the request of the request tour. He said, come on. And the Bible says he began to walk on water. And for some of you in here today, I feel real prophetic today. For some of you in here today, uh, you are doing things in your life that people thought you would never be able to do. 
Some of you single mamas in here, folk said you'd have gave up a long time ago, but you're still doing it. It's a tenacity that they have that God is allowing them or gracing them to be able to do something even while hearing the whispers of the people in the crowd. And it amazes me how folk got more to say in the bleachers than they do to sit in the game. Y'all ain't going to talk back here to me. So, 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 so he allowed Peter to, come, to do something, watch this, that had never been done before. Walking on water. Right? Am I in the text? But the text says this, and when he saw the wind Boisterous. Yes, sir. He got afraid. Yes, First of all, here's the problem with the text. Tell your neighbor, God always makes a way of escape. Now, don't just repeat it after me. Tell your neighbor, say, God, God always, always makes, a makes a way of escape. Of escape. Somebody say, what you, mean? what you mean? I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. How do you see when? How do you see when? It don't even sound right. You can't see when. And the problem why a lot of us are failing in our journey with Christ is because we're looking at stuff that we really ain't supposed to see in the first place. My God, today. I'm getting ready to preach today. You stop. Oh, God, help me here. I'm trying to behave myself today. Because y'all get real attitudinal when you think the word about you, but you get happy when the word about somebody else. <laughs> you got to accept responsibility for where you are in your walk with God. Now, the reality is, do you want greater? Because here's, what re here's where responsibility comes. God is tired of giving us stuff, and we won't give him a commitment. I'm trying to behave like I guess she could, you know, we want the car, we want the promotion, we want the house, we want the healing, we want the deliverance, but we won't give him nothing. And even gentlemen get tired of playing the fool sometimes. Everybody <laughs> sometimes. Even a, even a, oh, where, where, where my nice folk at in here today? Help me preach. I don't, maybe they on the live or something. You, you get tired of being taken advantage of all the time. I'm trying to say it. Now, I don't mean taking advantage. Sometimes you can use me. But all the time, every time I turn around, you using me as a garden tool. You using me as a transportation provider. You using me as a trash can. Bank. Thank you. That's why some of y'all can't get deliverance now. You're playing the part of a trash can. I'm ready to get through the text. Am I doing all right? So, am I, am I, am I, I'm not loud in my mother. I'm not loud in my mother. No, mother. Okay, all right, all right. Some of you, the reason why deliverance can't come is because you're playing the part of a trash can and you don't even play that one right. You're playing the part of a trash can and you don't even play that one right. Somebody said, what you mean? So glad you asked. In my house, in my, I can't speak for your house, but in my house every Thursday, the trash man comes. And whatever I take out to the road, the trash man takes it. So as long as I can get it out of my house to do the road, the trash man handles it. Now here's the difference between us and the trash man. I don't go chasing the trash man trying to figure out where he taking my trash. Because if it's trash, I have no need for it anymore. Are y'all walking with me? 
all right, I got to give a little curveball right here. So if it's somebody's trash and they don't have need of it anymore, why are you always receiving the trash that somebody else don't have? And at least if you're going to be a receiver of trash, you got to be strong enough to at least once a week take that trash. Oh, God, help me here. To the street so that the Holy Ghost can come and take away. Oh, God, help me here. What's been holding you? I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to be loud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I ain't going to call no names. But you can just think about who you know, that the reason why they can't walk in the fullness of God is because they know too much about too many people. And you got to be careful knowing too much about too many people, because when you know too much about too many people, you don't know about yourself. You got to be careful always giving an ear to lolly dotty and everybody wanting to hear what's going on in their house, wanting to know what's going on on their job, wanting to know what's going on in their body, talking about so you can pray. Girl, please, you ain't prayed in seven years, so why are you going to pray now? You can't even pray for your own children, so why are you going to pray for me? You don't pray for your own health, so why are you going to pray for me? At least if you're going to pray for me, lead by. It starts with me. Some of us are struggling now because we didn't take stuff to God, we took it to people. The songwriter said, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. What sense does it make to come to church, bring your burden to the altar? Matter of fact, we got to get back to doing that too. We got to get back. And I know, I know, Lexi, I'm sorry. You know, we have to have a little meet or something. I know y'all be trying to get to brunch and we be trying to get out of church at a nice time, hour and a half. I think an hour and a half is nice. You know, nice time for worship and stuff. But we got to get back to opening up the altar. Uh-huh. We got to get back to opening up the altar. Because see, see, you, you, you can't cover the church with burden in your pocket. And we don't give you an opportunity to release the burden. And then you take it back. But, but, but some of y'all, even if we open up the altar, you're going to come right up to the altar. You're going to cry, snot, spit, go through a half a box of Kleenex, hold up service. And still, when, you, when your tears dry up, you're going to walk back halfway to your seat and say, oh, I forgot what I left at the altar. Mm-hmm. Can I preach like I feel it today? The reason why some of y'all won't release it is because you like the fringe benefits that come along with it. That's why you have folk living in the project for 20 and 30 years, generation upon generation. And you got, you got new generations now that want to do better, but they can't because for two or three generations, all they've seen is $13 a month rent. All they see, And I ain't nothing wrong with it, but you ought to get to a place where you want better for your life. Ain't nothing, wrong, ain't nothing wrong with welfare. Ain't nothing wrong because I've been on welfare and I had to fare well. But when you get to the place in God where you know better, you got to do better. I remember I ain't calling no name, but a few years ago, a few years ago when we first moved in here, uh, there was a member that we had here at the church. They called the, where, the social service and said, give me six months. And after the six months, take me off of everything. They had faith to believe that if I trust in God and I follow the word of God and the will of God, then I don't need the man to sustain what God made a promise that he was going to do. You can't believe in Jehovah Jireh when you believe in Jehovah EBT. Now, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with EBT. I just thought I'd put that out there. I just thought I'd put that out there. Ain't nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I just thought I'd put it. I know it's a little rough right now, you know. <laughs> oh, but sooner or later, it's going to It's going to turn it in our favor. <laughs> it is our responsibility. Somebody say my responsibility. To be prepared for the promise. Who would like to have a million dollars? What you going to do with it if you get it? Mother, am I doing all right? Okay, all right. All right. Sir, am I doing all right? Oh, all right, all right. What you going to do with a million that you won't do with a thousand? Some of y'all done lied and got that PPP money. They ain't even do right by it. Now, now if, you, if you lied and got it, then you can be mad. But but if you didn't lie and get it, then you ought not be mad with me. I had a right to get the PPP and didn't get it. 
Wei gak tak kuai ini. Lah, lah pipi pikir ini. What? What are you going to do when God does what you've been asking Him to do? God make a way out of nowhere. And he does. he does. Now what? Now what? Give me a house, God. I just need a house. Uh-huh. And he does. he does. Now what? God, if I just get a car, I'm tired, yeah. of, I'm tired of riding the bus. I'm tired of uh-huh. catching a ride to church. Now what? now what? God, give you a car. Hey, Sister Pearl, can you pick up Sister Debbie? No. <laughs> not, 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 not my new car. Mm-mm. Tell Sister Debbie, wait on the bus. What you going to do when God? Because God don't bless you. God, God, God don't. Can, can I say it? Okay. Contrary to popular belief, God don't bless you for you. I know you think you that good. I know you think it's, you know, sunshine. I know you think you all that and all the bag of chips. But God didn't do what he did for you. He did what he did for you so that he can get the glory. He did what he did for you so that others can see his handiwork so they can apply their faith to what they need him to do. You don't get a car and tell people, look what my overtime did. Look what DoorDash did. You get a car and say, look what God. And if God can do it for me. We find here in the text, we find here in this text. One, two, three, four, five, six. We find here six times in one verse that we find the reference I. One verse, six times. Uh, and, and the writer wants to make sure there's no ambiguity in what we're talking about. Not when your neighbor was a child. Not when your kinfolk were children. But when I I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. Now, for the sake of preaching presentation here today, child in this text has nothing to do with being a minor. Because I know some folk that's 45, 55, and 65 that are still childish. I, y'all, y'all not be 35 years old still making babies and you don't have a house. Uh, yeah, there needs to be a degree of responsibility. And you ought not lay with nobody 35 and ain't got nowhere. To, he ain't took care of the last 17 kids he got, so why you think he going to take care of yours? We're not, we're not going to put the responsibility on one when it takes two to tangle. Somebody, somebody, somebody came to me one day wanting to talk about somebody, uh, and was just talking about them real bad. Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, did they rape you?" Cause I picked my phone up. I was going to call nine one one. Cause surely, surely, if they raped you, now we can call the police and handle this. All this that you said doesn't happen. Well, no, no, Bishop, no, I wasn't like that. Well, what was it like? You got a one-sided story this morning. No. Who paid for the room? I know he took you, but who paid for it? Because he ain't got no jobs. He ain't got no money. Who paid for the appetizers? Because I know you couldn't afford an entree. Y'all ain't talking back to me. 
When I was a child, I spoke to a child, I thought of the child, I did childish things. Let's be honest here today, with the exception of my senior members, all of us here have done childish things after 21. We've made decisions off of emotion. We've made decisions off of a feeling. And pride won't let us write the decision that we make once we realize, oh, God help me here today. I'm trying to talk the best I can, sis. I've made some decisions. Since y'all since y'all just holy and mighty, I've made some decisions. I've done some things I ain't proud of. I've said some things, and guess what? If I live a little while longer, I'm going to make some other mistakes. Oh, I'm getting ready to come sweep through the city today. You got to come down from your high horse thinking you don't make no mistake. Everybody makes a mistake. Hallelujah. You ought to thank God that God didn't make a mistake, but you make mistakes. That's why you got to extend grace to folk while you bumping your gums about where people think they ought to be, and you ain't nowhere where God has intended for you to be. Get yourself. Yes, I did childish things. I lied. I stole. I turned tricks. Silly rabbit. I did some other stuff. Some stuff I can talk about. And some stuff. I got a few more days. There's this little thing called Statute of Limitation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You leave that alone. I've been in the will of God. And there have been times that I intentionally stepped out. Oh, can we just be honest? So some of the stuff you did, the devil didn't really make you do it. Oh, what the devil? It was your flesh. Yeah. I tell the story oftentimes, mother, I tell the story oftentimes about the Baptist preacher who went to the church one Sunday morning and the devil uh, was sitting on the step of the church. And as he walked up the road, up, up, the, uh, up the sidewalk to the church, the devil was sitting there and he noticed the devil was crying. And when by the time he got in front of the devil, he said, why are you at my church this morning? And the devil looked up at the preacher with tears in his eyes and said, them people in there lying on me. That's the problem now. We're doing a lot of lying on the devil. Talk about the devil made you do it. The devil ain't make you do that. Your flesh was burning that made you do it. The devil ain't make you do it. Your lack of money to pay your bills made you do it. The devil ain't make you do it. Your need for affirmation made you do it. Come on now. Put the title where the title needs to be. When I was a child. I did what children are supposed to do. When I first get saved. That's why I'm so hard on my leaders because a child is someone that when they first get saved oh I'm getting ready to get you said I was doing all right sir right mother you said I was doing all right in the back am I doing all right not you Bo put your hand down oh, I'm doing right because I'm getting ready I'm getting ready to say something it's gonna challenge it did you did you come up to the Praise, okay, I, my, my glasses, I, you know, even when I'm on. But I'm getting ready to say something. Yeah. <laughs> when you first get saved, yeah. right? Yeah. According to Romans 10 and 9, the, the Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus died on the cross, you are saved. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It don't say delivered. And it don't say filled with the Holy Ghost. It says saved. Salvation is nothing more than a belief and a confession. Are y'all with me? So I can be saved and still smoke Newport. I see my man back there. Not as his. <laughs> Must be all right. Whew. There have been times I said it. They'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> So I can be saved and still lie. I can be saved and commit fornication. Because I'm just believing 
and I'm confessing. But deliverance is a process. Now, for some of us in here uh, that, that come from the old church, uh, we came to the altar, and, and some stuff God took just like that. But there was some stuff that for, for some of us, we still walking in. I'm just talking about me. I'm just talking about me. I did good last year, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing good this year with my weight. I did real good last year. Oh, but this year it's been a struggle. <laughs> I have some rough days. Oh, man, Mother Walker, last week, my wife, you know, we had a rough day. And she went to the food line, and she, she bought some cookie dough mix. And she baked, like, six cookies. And I said, what's all the cookies you going to bake me? She said, well, yeah, because I thought normally you eat the cookie dough. I said, God's good to me. And I said to myself, I ain't going to eat that cookie dough. And every time I went to the refrigerator to get a cup of water, something said, Psst. I'm just using me. I'm just using me. Because I don't want to use y'all because y'all get attitude in them. I went and got some juice. Psst. Now watch this. It was all right as long as I opened the refrigerator. Because our refrigerator is top and we got two freezers at the bottom. It was all right uh, as long as I opened the refrigerator to see stuff that needed to be refrigerated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but when I opened that freezer, yeah. it was sitting right there. Yeah. As long as I can't see it, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. But now that I, 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 I can deal with a psst. Yeah. <laughs> I can deal with a slide in the DM. I can deal with an innuendo because I'm saved, but I ain't all the way delivered. The devil had the one day that I was rough day. I don't even know what I went to the freezer for, but I opened up that freezer and it was like the pearly gates had opened. You heard the cherubims and the cherubims crying, holy, holy, holy. And I'm looking at it. And it's looking at me. And we having a conversation, and ain't neither one of us said a word yet. Y'all know how that happens. Y'all see somebody out at the mall that you ain't seen in seven years. And you having a conversation. He with his wife and you with your husband. But y'all having a conversation. Uh-huh, ain't a word been exchanged. But right around 1030 at night, somehow, some way, y'all both end up at Shooty Park. Uh, no conversation. How that happened? Okay. You have to walk in deliverance. And I have to take time to explain this because a lot of us, and we will be honest, and I know I'm trying to make this as, as jovial as, as I possibly can, but, but for most of us, uh, what we were taught as a child has hindered our growth in God. And the reason I'm trying to make this as light as possible is because it's never too late for you to have an aha moment. It's never too late for you to come to the knowledge of the truth because the Bible says it's only then can you walk in. See, let's, let's be honest. Who thought as a child growing up that all the Holy Ghost was was you're knocking over chairs and they go get the sheets and you're crying and you're snotting and stuff coming out. That's what you thought it was. And most folk with any degree of maturity be like, I don't want that. I mean, I'm being honest. I don't want, I don't want nothing that causes me, no, to lose control. 
That's why I got to preach it like I, 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 because most of us thought that if you get this thing called the Holy Ghost, you only see people that's out of control, knocking over chairs, tripping, falling. What is you saying? And God forbid you're a dignified person. you like, oh, H, no, I don't want that. Speak English. Why I got to knock over a chair or two to praise God? Why can't I just sit in my seat and wave my hand? I remember, I remember when we first started the fire and praise. Now I come from that kind of church where we shout. And I remember when I was younger though, I ain't had to hold on to nothing. When I was younger, we now all that noise y'all hearing, my feet ain't lifted off the ground yet. When I was younger, I'd pick them up and put them down. How? I would. But then you get older, you don't want to trip and fall, so you get to moving them on. But then you get a little older, you hold on to something. I thought that's what you had to do. I'm being honest. Came up through ministry thinking that if you don't praise God like that, you don't got the Holy Ghost. So when we first started the church, we was over at the hotel, and, and God was doing a new thing. And I ain't like what God was doing. And I would talk to him about it. See, y'all only talk to God. <laughs> I, I talk to God about everything. See, y'all only talk to God what is conducive for you to come out of something. I would leave the hotel mad after we just had an encounter with God. Man. God would meet us in the backside of that hotel. My wife, well, my wife at the time, she said, uh, Darlisa, uh, 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 your aunt, your sisters, your mother, man, they be in there crying. I'd be mad. I was paying musicians. They didn't mean boom pack. I was hot. Because you got the boom pack. You don't have good church if you don't have no boom pack. They'd be all out in the play the cabin. <laughs> Everybody just crying. And I'm mad. I don't got finished preaching the gospel. Mad. So one day we was riding home together. She talking about, sure was a good service. I said, shut up. <laughs> Wasn't no daggone good service today. Wasn't no boom pat. I got to move my feet. So God can move my situation. You know, I got cliches for days. And the Holy Ghost one day had to remind me, do you want an emotional church or do you want a mature church? He said, because what you have right now are people that have shifted from just being saved to now are asking God to bring about a degree of deliverance so they can be prepared for when I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I've gotten in trouble down through the years for having folk come through this church that y'all said wasn't living nothing. And y'all said I was giving them a pass. But no, everybody needs an opportunity to receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Now, here's the difference. You ought not be a leader and need an outpour. You ought to have yourself together if you're a leader. You can, as a leader, now I expect my lay members to bleed on social media. I expect my, 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 my lay members to, to have a heavy moment. Not my leader. You ought to be mature enough to know how to bleed in private. 
See, leaders, we lead while we bleed. Some of my greatest messages have been preaching while I was hurt. Y'all have come up here on Sundays and shouted, and God met us, and I was crying on the inside. So the Katina Powell used to always say, you could tell when the bishop was tired because he preached real good. I said, no, baby, I need deliverance. So I had to preach my own deliverance because I couldn't let y'all down. See, when you're a leader, you you got enough Holy Ghost to get yourself together while the lights are on. Because you don't know who is pulling on your power so that they can get some power. You oh no, I got to, I'm, I'm gonna free myself today. You don't know how many Sundays I was ready to drop the mic and say, I'm done. I don't need this foolishness. But I asked the God of my salvation to put your hand on me. And the more I preached, the better I felt. Hallelujah. See, I ain't gonna lie like a lot of preachers. I ain't gonna come to church and preach y'all happy and then go to the beer garden to get a drink. I ain't going to come here and preach a message and then go get my side piece. I don't have a side piece. I don't, when you got a whole half a cow, you don't need a side piece. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't talking back to me. And when, you, when you're walking in the way of God, you still press. Even when you're heavy. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I did some childish things, but conjunction, junction. What's your function? But when I became a man, I put away. The preacher didn't put him away for me. The church mama didn't put him away for me. But I put him away. Which means I had to get to a place in my own walk with God where I realized that I got to stop playing these childish games because these childish games ain't getting me nowhere in God. Are y'all with me today? So look at your neighbor and say, it starts with me. You got to make up in your mind that in the next season of your life, for God, I'm going to live. And for God, I'm going to die. Philosopher and psychologist William James wrote, and I quote, Human beings, by changing the inner attitudes of their minds, can change the outer aspects of their life. In other words, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Hmm. You got to get to a place as a believer in Jesus Christ, that even while you're down in the pit, you see yourself delivered. Even while you're sick in your body, you got to see yourself healed. You've got to understand that God would have never brought you this far to leave you. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. Uh, is there anybody here that knows that I once was down in despair, uh, but the hand of God touched me? And not only did the hand of God touch me, but the hand of God reached way down, touched me with his finger of love, picked me up and turned me around, elevated me to a higher level of thinking, placed my feet on a higher ground. So now when I praise God, I don't praise him because I think he can do it. I praise God because I know for myself that if it had not been for the Lord, y'all can testify that I don't know where I'd be. But if it had not been for the Lord, I would be a wretch undone. If it had not been for the Lord, or, I would be probably sleeping in my grave. So now that I came to the knowledge of the truth, I can walk therein. Something on the outside got on the inside and brought about a change in my life. But I had to realize that it started with me. I can't help my wife until I get myself 
together. I can't be an example to my children until I get myself together. I can't be an example to people who need me to show the way until I get myself together. My heart must be fixed and my mind must be made up that I'm going all the way to see the law. It starts with me, one of the greatest prophets of my generation, the late great Michael Jackson. He wrote a song one day and he said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. You got to look yourself in the mirror and declare if God be God, bring about a change in my life do I have a witness in here this morning but in order for the change to take place you must adapt to the change in order for Christ to take you further in other words you got to stop acclimating to things that are around you but you got to ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost so the things around you can acclimate to you I wish I had a witness here I'm tired of trying to figure out who you are from one day to the next I'm tired of trying to understand how you can be sometime up and sometime down and other days almost leveled to the ground if God has been good to you you owe God more than what you're giving I know it's heavy now but the Bible declare I'm trying not to be too loud, mother. But every now and then get good to me. The Bible declares that the race is not given to the swift. Let's ride. And neither is the battle given to the strong. But it's given to the one that can endure. Endure what? Endure hardness as a good soldier. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've been misunderstood. But I had to declare, though they slay me, yet will I trust him. I gotta learn to trust in the law because some trust in horses and others trust in chariots but as for me in my house we will trust the law yeah it's gotta start with me my victory starts with me my deliverance starts with me my breakthrough starts with me my power starts with me come on power we get ready to leave but you got to make this declaration that before you leave today that what you need God to do has to start with you we gotta stop blaming people for our dysfunction we got to stop making excuses for why it ain't go right but you got to get yourself together because the Bible declares that if any man be in Christ he is a new creature And behold, all things have become new. In other words, can I preach like I feel it? In other words, I looked at my hands and they look new. Look down at my feet and they did too. Something got a hold of me. Say yeah.
You was the child. You spoke as a child. You understood as a child. You thought as a child. So why should it be somebody else's responsibility? To get you right. When you're the cause of the situation. If he started it, he can finish. If you started it, you can finish it with his help. If he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, that means he already knows the next chapter of your life even though you don't know it. Here is why we have to learn to trust him. But it's your responsibility. Man, I want the best for everybody. Like, like that's, there's, there's a hip, hip hop song. All I do is win, win, win. Uh, I don't, whatever the words is, I'm past that, I don't know. I don't know, for, I, don't mean, I don't even know who, 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 who rap it, Khaled? Khaled, all I know is something up, and they stay there. But why, why, why the heathens can go up and stay there, but we can't? You know, when I go down to Florida, it's, you know, I'll be trying to come up on Rick Ross. I'll be trying to find out where he be at so I can happen to be in the same restaurant so I can go to him like, be like, what's up, Ross? Khaled too. I just, I just believe, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna meet somebody famous one day. I'm gonna shake their hand, and I'm gonna grip that joker. Shut that up, my hasha. I'm gonna get in that ear. I'm gonna say, step back, security. I'm gonna get in that ear. The Lord say. I'm gonna take them back to where they was ten years old playing on the monkey ball. And once you see them tears, I got them now. Yes, when I get done, I'm going to say, all right, security, I don't want no smoke. <laughs> and they're going to say, man, what do you have need of? I'm going to say, well, since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> what's this? Uh, the song, help me real quick, those of y'all that know it. The song says, all I do is win, uh-huh. right? What, what, what else? No matter what, I got money on my mind. I can never give it up. And every time I step up in the building, everybody's hands go up, and they stay there. So all I do is win, no matter what. Got Jesus on my mind. Huh? I could never give him up. And when I, huh? When I step up in the building, we supposed to pray, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And they stay there. So, so why if the heathen can speak declaration, we can't. And they stay there. The benediction come, y'all put your hands down. Like, like, the responsibility has to rest on us. And, and, and as hard as it may be, here is why you can't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because when you come to church, it could be 50 people in this room. 
but there's at least one person in the room that has gone through something similar to what you've been through. And if they can have a testimony of victory, then it lends credence to the fact that if God can do it for them, then by faith I believe he can do it for me. That's why I got to keep my hands up and let them stay there. Because all I do is win. Watch this. Even when I don't win, I never lose. Even when I don't win, I never lose. Because even in the moments that I don't win, I learn a lesson on what not to do the next time. That was good for some of y'all. Because some of y'all keep going back to your old vomit. Some of y'all keep going back to the same thing, just in a different package. You don't need to get delivered from people. You need to get delivered from yourself. And that's no disrespect, because your pastor had to ask God to deliver him from himself. Because I had low self-esteem. And, I, and, I, and I, I was a season of my life where I really cared what people thought. Like, I really cared. Like, there was a season, pastoring, not before pastoring, pastoring. There was, there was a time where if you had any kind of spirit, whether it's the Holy Ghost or a demon, you could practically cater my next sermon. Anybody knows me knows one of the first things I do after the benediction, I look at the feed to see what I could have said better. Because I really want to see God's people delivered. I don't do this as a vocation. I don't do this as something to do on a Sunday. I really want to see people's lives change. So I'm mindful. Like the mother came today. I know this. Nobody else did. When, when the gentleman got up, I said, okay, it's too loud. Most folk would have been like, well, that's just one person that think it's loud. I'm going to keep on being loud. But when you're a pastor that God sent, you're mindful of everybody. I don't miss too much in the temple. And, and then the mother got, if I'm lying, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. But mother got comfortable. But then when I got into the hoop of the message, as good as the hot sauce was to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, because the hoop is the hot sauce. Yes, sir. Dravy. Yes, sir. I saw mother. Now, when I was preaching, when I was laying foundation. But then when I got into the hot sauce of it, she. I have to be mindful. That's why God said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. You're a sorry pastor if you ain't mindful of the people you lead. You got to be mindful of everybody. Watch this. I pastor the ones that y'all see and the ones you don't see. That's why I don't let y'all bump your gums about stuff that's above your prey grade. Mm -hmm. Because some stuff is above your prey grade. I didn't let nobody ask where you was when you was MIA. Oh, I ain't got too many amens now. When you was doing some stuff, I covered you. So we don't expose folk when they need to be covered. We don't do that. Oh, I ain't got too many amens. So, and it's no indictment on me. I want people to come to my church. Yeah. I feel like I got something the world needs. Right. My approach to the gospel is, is you don't find it around here. Yeah. I make you think, I make you laugh, make you mad with me, and I make you happy. <laughs> Just call me the emotion man. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
But I ask God, I, you know, folk, somebody could call me Sunday afternoon. Bishop, you sure did preach good. But, you know, when you was talking about so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, I don't think you should be putting that in the message. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So then the next Sunday, the Holy Ghost say, say it again. <laughs> and I'll be like, no. Nah. Because I didn't want to offend the people. Right, right, right. And when you go through years of that, yeah. it messes with your psyche. Yeah. Till one day the Holy Ghost said, who called you? Who called you? You preaching, you trying to accommodate folk that will leave you at the drop of a wooden nickel. When I have never left you. Folk would come, folk used to come and have me little, little sidebar meetings with me. Uh, Bishop, could you not say this? Because, you know, because, you know, I have children that come to this church. And we want to be mindful of, you know. Oh, and yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'll be mindful. I'll be mindful. Until I'll be talking to the children of about six months later. And they'd be like, Mom and Dad locked me in the room last night. I'd be like, oh, did they? So what were they doing? I don't know what they were doing, but it was a whole lot of hollering. And I asked my mom on my way to church this morning, if I call him daddy, why was you calling him daddy? I said, oh, well, praise God. Why you want to tell me what to say? <laughs> so I had to ask God, God, deliver me. And he did it. He did it. And if God, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. But you have to be in the right position. Yes, sir. I'm going to say it as basic as I can. If we're going to pray, and we're going to be out here. And I'm, Solomon, could you move to that? Wait, just a little bit. Good. I'm on time. I'm going to say one thing, and I'm out of here. Okay? Uh, this, is the, as the basis as I, this is as basic as I can get it, and I'm done. You got to look at the Holy Ghost. Anybody here work for Dart? Okay, good. You got to look at the Holy Ghost like a dart bus. Right? If you need to catch the bus, you get a schedule. Right? It's going to be at this bus stop at this time. If the, if, the, if, the, if the bus is supposed to be at 1015 and you come getting there at 1027, you're going to miss the bus. Why? Because I wasn't in position to get on the bus. There's get ready to be an outpouring of God's spirit. This is why we're preparing for Pentecost. We don't want to just get to Pentecost and just shout out and wear white and say, my God, another year in the books. No, I, I need to be ready because according to God's timing, 50 days after the resurrection, when we when there's a unity in the faith, there's going to be an outpouring. So I want to make sure I'm one in the number so when the poor comes, I can be a recipient. I don't care, I don't care how hard you try to explain a service, you can never explain a service to a person that was not here. I heard y'all had a good service, child. Well, what happened? You could run the whole litany down, and they'll still never grasp it unless you were here. Because you got to be in position. Now, thanks be unto God that he has created technology where I don't have to be in the room, but I can still be a recipient to the outpour. But even in that, I have to be in position to get it when it comes. Yeah. One plant, yeah. one water, one water. But, but God gives the increase. Yes, Let us, as we leave here today, do more examining of ourselves. Y'all, we can be too judgmental. You want to judge somebody, judge me. I can handle it. You want to talk about, you want, you want, you want to talk about somebody, talk about Bishop. He's so fat. You want to talk about Bishop? Talk about Bishop is a glutton. 
No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, giving, you, I'm, I'm giving you stuff to talk about. If you want to talk about somebody, talk about me. I, I got it. Yeah. Who bitch you think he is trying to look like Rick Ross? Like, if, if you need something to say. Yeah. Because what happens is the scripture says, judge not lest ye be judged also. We spend more time judging folk, but then we get offense when someone has judged us. I know I said I had one thing and I was done, but I got one more to add to it. This is what happened when you got the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, the Bible says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Uh Uh-huh. But what's the rest of it? I will do the separating. Stop me. Listen, whoever doing what they grown up to do, God going to get them. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. God can't do what he wants to do as long as your mouth is in what God's trying to do. I don't bother folk. I let God do it. And when God do it, God can't nobody do it better than God. And sometimes stuff has, has been done to me and has been done to this church, and it grieves my heart. There have been times, just being transparent, I wanted to call some folk and cuss them all the way out. And then call my bishop and repent. Because there's some stuff as a human, I don't like what I'm seeing some people do. There's some trifling stuff going on right now that I just personally don't like. Because some folk ought to know better. Especially when you name the name of God. But I don't touch it. You know why I don't touch it? Because over there in Chronicles, God said to Jehoshaphat, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Stand still. Set yourself. See the salvation. And it get hard sometimes because you love people. Bishop Cannon is a people person. I love people. I love people. Mother Walker, it's hard getting on social media sometimes, seeing some folk play the fool. It's hard. It's hard. There have been times, there have been times I've gotten on social media and I don't be on it a lot like I used to. Uh, Cause you don't make no money on Facebook. You make money on Instagram. Don't be on Instagram. But there have been times I've seen people do stuff, and I get to typing. Cause you know ain't nothing worse than trying to tell somebody off on social media and your grammar jacked up. But I be wanting to to say stuff like, it's amazing how y'all are best friends now, but when y'all came to my church, y'all couldn't stand one another. I mean, 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 y'all going out to dinner now, uh, but but do they know what you said about them? But right when I get ready to hit enter, the Holy Ghost said delete. I said, God. But that's when you know you got the Holy Ghost. Let me help some of y'all. Let me help some of y'all. Take more time to take inventory of yourself. Because why are you busy judging others? You've done some stuff that needs to be judged as well. Folk leave this church, come back to this church. We don't, we don't put a scarlet letter on them. Because you left before. Watch this. You left and you was here every Sunday. Somebody say, how is that? Your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side. You're messing him around. Some of y'all come right to church every Sunday and unchecked out. Thank you. I, and, and, I, and you know how I know sometimes? Spirit be high, folk be shouting all around, you be like, Am I lying to you? I mean, folk be slaves in the spirit. You be like, like a zombie. Checked out. But this is getting ready to be a great, uh, this is getting ready to be one of the greatest seasons of this ministry. This is getting ready to be a great season for your life. Because when you get the Holy Ghost and get them right, 
when he poured his thing out, not just on you, but in you. I'm going to preach some stuff in the next couple of weeks. This is going to be real, real like, yeah, because watch this. You can't, you can't get to AIDS before play. Amen. You get infected after you've been penetrated. And see, the problem with the church right now, the reason there's an exodus from the church is you got, you got a lot of people spiritually foreplaying. So there can be no penetration of God because you only want to touch. You don't want an embrace. Y'all a little tight, but it's all right. It's all right. God says, I want to step into you. The same way I got to quit, but the same way that God saw the world getting so out of pocket he went into his spirit and pulled out flesh to create Christ, to send him to the world. He wants to step into you. God, we thank you once again for this time of fellowship. We trust and pray something that's been said or done that's been edifying to these, your people. God, continue to make us who and what you have called for us to be. We are your people. We are your people. We are your people. Help us, God. Be what you have called us to be. Deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from people. And deliver us into your hand. God, I pray for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. We, we, we don't need to know the specifics of their prayer. But, but we touch and agree with them on today about their prayer. We pray, God, now that you will hear their prayer, hearken to their call. I pray today, God, that you will dispatch ministering angels to every soul, whether on the live or in the temple. Meet the needs, O oh God, in their life. I pray, God, on this week, shine your light from the lighthouse on us. Don't show the world, but show us the areas that we can work on. But then give us the strength to work on them. Because we've realized working on things by ourselves won't get us far. But when we have your help, we can do all things because you give us strength. I speak healing on this morning. I speak deliverance today. I speak victory in the name of Jesus. Have your way in us the more. I pray for that person today, God, whose back is up against the wall. They don't have the answer. They don't know which way to turn. But I pray, God, that you will give them the answer. I pray, God, that you will give them the blueprint. And more than the answer, God, more than the blueprint, I pray that you provide them victory. And then once you bring them out, give them a testimony, not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. I pray today, God, before I close this prayer, that you send increase to this church. You speak to the winds of the north, the south, the east, and the west. Send men, God, send women to this church with a mind to serve and a mind to work. Send them here, God, to help us continue to lift up your name in this community. Do it, God, and we will be so ever careful and mindful to give your name the praise. The glory and the honor is yours forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all so much for coming. We'll see you all next week. Prayer tomorrow at 6 a.m. No Bible study Thursday. We'll be back here on Sunday. How many of you know that God's got something better installed for you? Come on, boy.